So welcome you're tuned into Radio Western 94.9. Today I'm joined with joined by uh, Parker uh, Tomlinson who happens to be one of the USC presidential candidates. So my first and the most simple question here would be how have you been and how's campaigning been for you from uh, till now? I've been good. Um it's definitely it's definitely stressful but it's also exciting and I think we've, you know, run a really great campaign and now it'll be about how many people can we get to come out of the come out to the polls, I think, the electronic polls. Um but it's it's definitely been it's been an interesting campaign season too just given that everything's been online. I'm trying to engage people in that way. I got to do my first Instagram live ever, so that that was fun. Um but overall I'm I'm doing well. Okay. That's that's great to hear. I I'm sure it's a, it's also although it's a fun time also but it's again it's also a little stressful um so i'll begin with my uh, questions here so uh, recently uh, you know western was ranked 8th in uh, one of mclean student rankings uh, university rankings for student experience um western has been known for student experience that was one of the reasons i came to western uh, i'm international um so uh, like keeping that in mind do you think that your policies and your platform will uh, help regain the university status as one of the best or one of the greatest uh, in Ontario or in Canada in terms of uh, student experience definitely um i i think my platform has um the most focus on sort of student experience and student engagement i think uh, one of the things that i'm really working on with my ideas is you know how can the USC like tangibly improve their services development opportunities programming student life just to really increase that student experience and make it the best it can be. Um the other thing that I'll touch on is uh, you know we've had it we've had a year where western's student experience truthfully has been kind of shot and not a lot of people have been able to get that experience especially first years and a lot of my platform points are oriented around bringing back that experience in a very big and meaningful way and being able to engage students in that. Okay. that's great that's uh, great to hear um so moving on it's a, a it's a pandemic related question because of course we are in this in midst of a pandemic and we don't, don't know when it's going to be over so we know that uh, you know over the period of uh, the last year and a few months western and you know the western community in general has been you know uh, criticized for uh, bringing in the second wave of covid-19 in in the london community and being unsafe in general and you know western western students being called out and so on so how do you prevent how do you plan that uh, in your platform to prevent such instances from happening mm-hmm. i think the hope is that you know next september we're in a s- situation where at, at least it's a hybrid model i mean the current projections tell us that we should have most people should have access to a vaccine by then so um you know the hope is that we're in that situation but to answer your question more di- directly if we are in a similar situation to how we are now um i think ensuring that uh, proper like cleaning or pr- procedures are in place ensuring that we're following the health guidelines similar to how we have been this year um making sure that like offices student spaces aren't like have proper capacity for the circumstances that we're in um and then lastly the one thing that I'll touch on is I I do think that orientation week should still continue to happen if we're in sort of a hybrid model. I think that no cases came out of orientation week this year and I think that that was something that a lot of first year students appreciated. Um you know to touch on that western student experience point, I think it's something that really makes that and that's something that I would want to see continue to happen unless we were in like a really dire setting in next September. Okay, I I completely agree. I think O week is one of the one of the biggest highlights uh, for first years when they join university of course it's a big transition it was a big highlight for me and seeing it virtually and seeing it in person uh, it's completely different so i agree so as a follow up question so how do you prank, uh, plan to you know, on bringing about clarity regarding the uh, ever changing covid-19 protocols of the university among the students so any protocols in place for that on your end yeah th- there's there's two pieces here i think it's um one is just like open lines of communication and transparency i don't think the western uh, has done a phenomenal job at that and the biggest area that i've found that to be the case is in housing so whether that's for first years soft or 
easier. Um, so being able to have, make sure that students know what the rules are before they're getting punished for that. And the same for SOFs, I think that's vital and Western housing is a body that I would wanna advocate towards to make sure that those open lines of communication are there. Um, the other thing that I would say, uh, I think is the other piece is making sure that it's well known what the sort of sanctions are and like rules are for different levels of lockdown. So, you know, the, the province of Ontario has different zones that, you know, if you weren't the green zone, whatever it is, and being able to know like, oh, we're in this zone now, mm -hmm. these are the rules that I have to follow within residence. I think making that very clear to students as they show up to university is something that I would want to sort of implement coming into next year if we were in a similar situation. Okay, that's a great answer. Um, so my next question would be uh, centered around, around gender-based violence. So covering events of gender-based violence can be a huge task as you know, most of it happens on Camp, on off-campus grounds, also on campus, but mostly on off-campus grounds. So what plan of action are you trying to implement to hold such behavior accountable while also ensuring that students are not under uh, constant surveillance by the university? And you know, there's no fear in students that we are under constant surveillance. So we should be different or we should act different or, you know, kind of, it shouldn't backfire. So what mm -hmm. do you uh, plan for that? One of the ideas that, that I have in my platform that I highlighted is, um, you know, two years ago, Kat recreated this, I've shown gender-based violence policy and she had a lot of recommendations. And one of those recommendations was to have like local bars and restaurants in London that serve alcohol adopt a like sexual and gender-based violence strategic plan and what our prevention strategic plan. And part of that is ensuring that um, all of their like bartenders, um, their employees, their uh, security are trained in sexual and gender based violence prevention and like intervention. And so that's something that I would want to like reach out to those communities, me, myself, like actually advocate to, to them, make sure that they adopt that plan so that like the downtown scene of London, if we're in, again, this is contingent on COVID a little bit, <laughs> but if we're in a similar sort of situation last year, maybe just making that a safer space for students and um, whether that's inside or outside of bars. Okay, I, I, I understand. Um, so my last question will be around what is one thing in your platform or in your policies that you feel stands out uh, and why do you feel it uh, stands out? So one of, the, one of the ideas that I think stands out is uh, sort of my development opportunities. And the reason for that is I feel like it's an area that's been overlooked of the, of the USC in the past is the opportunity to have students, you know, develop professionally, develop their skills, like develop within their, um, you know, chosen like field or hobbies. And so just a couple examples I have of that. One is introducing a professional development coordinator to help students with, um, you know, net, like plan networking workshops, um, career panels, uh, you know, how to net, like how to interview, how to cold email professors. Um, another is having USC research opportunities. So having the USC hire students to conduct research on USC like operations and services. So potentially doing a gap analysis on food support services is one idea. And then another idea for like professional development is uh, like my creative arts opportunities. So uh, one of, you know, just a couple is being able to have artwork in the wave, like student artwork in the wave, and then potentially being on sale. Another is to have a dance showcase. So allowing, you know, having the USC like host a dance showcase would be a cool way to um, allow dancers on campus to have like an outlet for performance, but also just help them like develop their skills and their performing skills more. Um, and then also to have more art galleries on campus. Um, so just more, more opportunities for student artists to showcase the work and sell their work to students or, okay. or, or just the general public, whoever decides to come. Okay, that's good. Of course, I, I did say uh, a few minutes before that it's my last question, but I think uh, time allows us uh, to uh, have a few more questions, if that's all right with you. Sure. Okay, so you mentioned uh, the professional development coordinator and a few other initiatives from your 
platform. So even before the pandemic, and of course in the pandemic, it was completely different. Student engagement has been a mixed response. Sometimes it's too high, sometimes it's less. So it's it's been a mixed bag. So how do you plan on increasing engagement of students with on-campus events and irrespective of their faculty in general, I mean? Mm -hmm. The way that, it's a great question. And truthfully, my entire platform and, and really candidacy has been oriented around engaging students. Um, so one of the, you know, one of the things that I did in preparation for this is reach out to over 300 students to consult um, so that my platform is student driven. I'm myself going out to actually engage students. Um, and I also have an entire pillar dedicated towards student engagement, which is unique to me. Um, and what that means is like, I have a lot of different ideas on how to get people more involved with USC programming, USC services, USC supports, USC advocacy. Um, and that go, you know, that ranges from just more sort of strategic branding to actually putting in place like a student rewards program, for example, to encourage students to actually use the services or the programming that's available to them that the USC provides. Um, the other thing that I'll say that I've done is uh, within my student development like section of my platform, I've tried to work on providing development opportunities to students that maybe wouldn't have had those opportunities within the USC in the past. I think uh, it has been very like social science driven, a lot of those opportunities. So making sure to provide opportunities to engineering students, for example, whether that's a build-a-thon or updating our website to allow software engineering students to have like an outlet um, or like I said, the USC research opportunities that appeals to a lot of science and health science students that maybe wouldn't have otherwise wanted to get as involved with USC um, sort of like structures and programming. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just, that's like a couple ways that I want to engage students more. Okay, that's inter interesting. And I think uh, I will uh, sign off uh, and uh, with this question. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's like a political cliche, but what is one thing you want to say to your uh, voters? I mean, to all Western students, not voters, but all those who are planning to vote on Feb 1st and 2nd. So what is one thing you want to uh, tell them right now? Yeah, the one thing that I would say is that, you know, year after year, uh, USC presidential candidates, they come in and they, they promise a lot of these amazing efforts. And I feel like year after year, we're, we're a little bit disappointed on what the follow through is like on that. So one of the things that I've, I've worked very hard to do is understand the USC, how it works and come up with creative and tangible sort of improvements to the services and ways to engage students. And I think that that's you know, a platform and a candidate that's worth voting for is someone who understands how to do it and knows how to follow through. Okay. So I would like to thank you for joining us, for joining Radio Western. And I encourage all Western students and otherwise to please go out there and vote, of course, virtually, uh, and uh, because your vote matters. And thanks, Parker, for joining in. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, may the best candidate win, as a lot of people say. <laughs> uh, but any any closing remarks, any questions or concerns you have before I uh, uh, switch off the recording? Nope. Just want to say thank you so much for having me and allowing me to get the chance to speak with you. Okay. Thank you.